All right, everybody, and welcome to the Self-Empowerment Project today. We have an amazing topic. We're going to be talking about hobbies and how we de-stress ourselves in ways that aren't just bubble baths and looking inside ourselves so we can find the big questions. Today, we've got Bernadette Bruckner and Mildred Agari, and these two wonderful women are here to blow you away. I can't give them enough praise. Starting with Mildred, she is an inner peace coach for spiritual truth seekers with ongoing, repeating mental, emotional suffering, and she helps her clients let go of those painful attachments and come into a space of deep, long-lasting inner peace by gently guiding them to remember the spiritual master within. Being born into and repeatedly exposed to emotional negativity and toxicity, as well as dealing with deep-seated resentments and psychic attacks from not from and among her family members, instead of love, kindness, and goodwill, she suffered a severe mental emotional wounding that stole the light out of her teenage years. Seeking healing outside of herself in all the wrong places got her stuck in a painful, injurious loop of disappointments and more wounding. When her will to live was completely drowned by her unanswered questions about the meaning of life, as well as the source and nature of mental emotional suffering, she underwent a deep spiritual transformation that took her out of that dark place and into freedom. And she is now dedicated to helping other beautiful souls who are lost and inexperienced to do the same. She is the founder of the spiritual coaching brand, Echoes of Source. Thank you so much for being here today, Mildred. Thank you, Catherine. I'm happy to be here. Uh, we've also got Bernadette Anna Bruckner. She is the creative all-rounder, worked successfully in different working fields in Austria and abroad. By her interest in corporate communications, marketing, human resources, and many other areas of business, she has appointed an enormous amount of knowledge over more than 30 years successfully a master's degree in health management with a focus on public health international phd and research in the fields of health communication with a focus on psycholinguistics combined with neuroplasticity and health economics international publisher and author of numerous books in different languages she won the global author award in 2018 and a nominee nlp award in research in 2019 in london 2021 opened her own research center for intuitive science in Austria, the Holistic Script Factory, and the Health and Nutrition Literacy LAB. With her podcast, radio show, and soon own TV show, as well as her health magazine, she invites experts and people with real stories showing up, being seen, heard, and recognized for changing together awareness around the globe. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. Y'all stories is exactly what we're here for. This is what we're trying to share with the world. So thank you both. All right. And we will get started. So today we're talking about hobbies. And so let's start with how do you give yourself permission to take time out to do these hobbies? Mildred? Okay, so um, I think the most important thing for me would be paying attention to how I feel, um, being present with how I feel. So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people deal with like guilt. With this our fast paced world, um, world, a lot of people deal with guilt, like taking out time to actually take care of yourself and um, do things that you enjoy. You know, when you have other responsibilities and other people depending on you, it can feel like um, a bit of a selfish thing to do. But I believe it is good because it's only when you have taken that time for yourself to love yourself, to heal yourself, um, that you will be able to have a full enough cup to give to other people. So um, I just pay attention to how I feel and my energy levels and you know, it's just a boundary or even a promise that I've made to myself that if I'm not operating from um, a full cup for myself, first and foremost, I know I'm not going to do it well enough for anybody else. And it's a disservice to them as well. So having that at the back of my mind gives me 
more than enough permission to, um, you know, just take out time. Whenever my energy levels are low, I know, hey, it's time to um, fill my cup. It's time to fill my tank. And until that is done, you know, I do not give myself permission to give um, uh, to other people, right? So that would be it for me, yeah. That's wonderful insight. Thank you for sharing that. How about you, Bernadette? I'm actually close to the same. I'm just listening to my body. I'm listening to my body, but it always depends. I don't want to say if I have time or not put a time out and sometimes I do give it into my calendar I just give it into my calendar this is my time of time I tell others I'm not available and I just do what I love and sometimes and now it, it might be um, listen a little bit silly but I do three times out so I do ahead time outing only because I know when I have stressed time, I don't have time for it. And I do it very consciously. And for me, it's like, when I love what I do, I have time out all the time. When I love what, what I, when it feels good, when it feels right, when I'm in my flow, this is time out. And maybe, and we will go later on to the hobbies, time out doesn't mean only being lazy, it doesn't mean you, I'm not. On, I'm only sleeping. Timeout can be also very active, and um, it, when you do it very consciously, when you do what you love, what you do, then you can choose timeout even when you're in the work. And I'm, by the way, I'm a huge fan of power napping and power timeouting. <laughs> That's wonderful. So. You both talk about knowing innately when you need to be able to take that break. What about when you talk to someone who doesn't know that yet? They haven't figured out that boundary. What advice would you give them? Let's start with Mildred. Okay, so um, as an inner peace coach, I believe that our innate nature as human beings is well-being, right? Is well-being. When you are when you are most aligned with your um, with your true nature, you know, with the source within you, you are in a state of well-being, right? So, for someone to the, the first advice I would give anybody that doesn't know. Uh, is how good are you feeling in this moment? Being present is very, very important. So how good are you feeling, right? A lot of people feel like, okay, their emotions are just um, things that, you, that happen, that come up, but they're actually a very good guidance system for you, right? So that would be my thing. I would say from moment to moment to moment, how good are you feeling? Right? How good are you feeling? If, if you're feeling bad because of some situation or some person or you know whatever um, outer circumstances, if you're feeling bad and this is something that is continuous for you, that is a very simple indicator that you should be paying attention to, right? So that, that for me, that, that would be the basic thing. That would be the basic thing is knowing that your, um, your sense of self as a human being is very closely linked to well-being, to feeling good about yourself, to feeling relaxed, to feeling, you know, uh, very, very connected to energy, to source energy. And cutting yourself out, cutting yourself off from that, from that original state of well-being is the reason why people um, feel strong negative emotion. So for me, my number one indicator is really my emotions. I, I, I really advise people to not try to switch them off, to not try to um, push them aside, none of that, right? Just really ask yourself, am I at ease right now? Am I at ease or have I been at ease for the past few days or for the past few hours? And if your answer is no, 
you know, that is your indicator. That is your number one indicator. So that would be my advice to um, anybody that doesn't know how to navigate that. Just first thing, put me at the front, forefront of your mind is how am I feeling right now? How am I feeling? Do I feel good or bad? And it's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to answer that question, right? So that would be my first indicator. Yeah. That is amazing. Thank you for breaking that down for us. How about you, Bernadette? Thank what you. are your thoughts on that? I, I, what I, I love it because we are truly going in the same direction. And I don't know how is it in your country, but in Austria, we got raised very rational. You don't have any feelings, especially with men. You're not allowed to have feelings because you're a man. And all the weird, the really weird beliefs what we get since childhood. And when I work with, with people, especially with, with mothers, I ask them, do you feel your body? And I wanna ask all of you, are you actually in the present, in the now? A lot of people are in the past, a lot of people are in the future, especially when we have times of crisis, what we have at the moment. So we have a lot of fear and everything else. And your body is listening to your feelings. Your body is listening all the time. And yet we don't feel it. We need diseases that we finally uh, get our time out. We need something else that happens, insurance, accidents, that we finally begin to listen to our body. What if when we begin at the moment? And I want to invite everybody who is listening that you, and I will, I will give you one method um, because I'm, I'm creating resilience methods for many years already. And this is a very simple one, actually. I call it the tree tool. What if you, when you're sitting or you're lying down and you begin to feel your breath, you begin to feel when you breathe in and when you breathe out. Because when we are under stress, our breath is very short and just and very fast. When you become conscious about your breathing, when you become conscious and slowing down, you begin to go more and more into your body. And with the tree method, you also can imagine because we have five senses. And a lot of people, sometimes I'm not quite sure if they know that they have senses next to the racial is not being, it's not a sense. <laughs> but what if when you begin to feel your body, when you begin, what do you hear at this moment? When you begin, what do you smell at the moment? Or what do you see at the moment? And maybe also what do you taste at the moment? You begin more and more going back into your body. And maybe you begin to feel your body again. And maybe your body hurts a little bit or you didn't wear before aware. And what if, and yes, it's so simple and the most simple things out there i always say this is the divine as as simply as it is it's more divine it is and as more we can implement it in our daily routine has to be being you know relaxed something big no you can do it everywhere even in the work even when you have stress with your partner or with your co-worker or whatever. Go back and breathe in and breathe out. Because the way we see something out there, we can see it positive, we can see it negative, and your body only reacts how we choose and judge actually the thing what we have at the moment this situation. And nothing more is important 
we can call it reframing, we can call it seeing a different angle and a different view. But the way we, we perceive something makes a difference. How we react on it, on stress, but with wonderful, with happy emotions. It always depends on your choice. That is wonderful advice, yeah. thank you. And I love that so far we've talked about how to get into the headspace so we can allow ourselves to do things we love. So let's talk about different kinds of hobbies that are out there. I know personally, I have a thousand and one of them. And it's because for me, it's relaxing to try to do different neat things. Um, so let's talk about the confidence aspect, trying something new now. How about you, Mildred? How would you get the confidence to go try something brand new you've never done before to see if it turns out as a hobby? It's my thing. It's my thing, you know? Like, um, it's always been my thing. So I'm the, I'm the type of person that would go try like a new recipe at a restaurant. Um, and while I do that um, for the enjoyment of the food, I also have an ulterior motive because you know, I'm thinking, oh, how can I pick, like, I don't really know what's in this meal, but how can I piece the ingredients together to try it on my own, right? So cooking is one for me, right? And I do that with, um, I do that with, you know, as many things as I can possibly get my hands on. So um, the how, how to get the confidence. Um, I wouldn't, well, personally for me, that is my thing, like I said, but I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't, how do I put this? I wouldn't make it compulsory for anybody. I would say more importantly is for you to figure out something you do enjoy, first of all, right? I feel, I feel like participating in a hobby that you do enjoy is more important than um, maybe just going out and trying something new but that is the personal opinion right so um yeah that's that's basically all i have to say about that i would say focus more on what gives you joy right yes you can try something yes you can try something and it's it might not okay for instance i tried sculpting once i like working with my hands so um i like doing these uh projects like crochet projects or hand sewing projects. I would rather hand sew a whole dress than use like a sewing machine or something. But I tried sculpt, like sculpting once and it didn't really, it, it felt really, it felt more stressful trying to like work with uh, like a sculpture. So even though I had the confidence to like say, oh, let me go try this new thing. Um, I found myself like, you know, wanting to just fall back on something that I enjoy because I feel like hobbies are for ease and for joy and for you know like relaxation um as uh Brendette said so that would it that would be it for me you know going more with your enjoyment rather than um thinking you know how do I become more confident to try something new because it might not always um it might not always pan out to be such a nice time, you know, to be hardest to choose. So that, that was my own personal experience. That is beautiful. So I would love to hear what um, Brenda has advice. to say about that as well. It, it, it's so interesting. Um, only knowing my background, I'm coming from a bakery and I had to work a lot. I always, um, I'm, I'm probably a workaholic because of that. And my, my brother, 2009, um, my brother had bankruptcy. And since then, because I had to work uh, at home in the bakery next to my work, next to my studies and whatever, even when I was abroad, my brother called me, you have to come home because we need to, we have an event, you, you have to help. Uh -huh. <laughs> and since 2009, when we closed down the bakery, I was like, what I'm doing now with so much time. I, 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 was, I was overwhelmed. I had no idea what I'm doing with so much spare time. And I said to my brother, you know what? 
now I can try nearly everything what I always wanted to do to know actually which kind of hobby I want to have. So I tried tons of different sports, really <laughs> tons of different sports. I didn't have time before. I begin to design, I begin to, to read, I begin to uh, different stuff, even sawing and uh, weird stuff. I mean, like for other people, it's normal stuff. For me, it's like, I don't know what I'm doing with it, but let's do it. Even um, um, with, um, ah, what, what's the English word for it? Um, like Robin Hood with the, with the arrow and just uh, uh, archery. Doing, yes. I was like, you never know, maybe I like it. So the confidence is actually with me, it's curiosity. When I never tried it, I don't know. Today, and I'm also um, like you, Milford, I love cooking. I think I have that from my mom. And I'm creating my own recipes. And thank God that I have a really good gut because some of that stuff was not a good idea. <laughs> some of the stuff was, was good. So I'm truly uh, creating new recipes, even praline at the moment. Um, and there are a couple of things what I, what I kept myself. I, I do kettlebell. I love functional fitness and hiking and all the things. And I also begin to design. I even went to the university doing some courses. I was not good in that one, but I'm, I'm designing houses. I'm designing uh, furniture. I'm designing kitchens. I'm designing um, uh, clothes. And at the moment, I'm getting in a nice, uh, you know, that's other, that I really can begin to, to, to give them to someone who can saw it and all the things. But I never could do it before. And I did because I didn't, in my teenies, I had to work so much that I, in my opinion, missed the weird teeny stuff. So you're never too old for trying something new if you stay curious. And in my, I think it was 35, I began the first time, I always wanted to have uh, blonde hair. So I began to dye my hair for free because they needed someone uh, that they can try and all, anything. I nearly tried every single blonde nuance. And for, for all the listeners, I'm actually dark. I'm truly dark, dark hair. Um, till they one day said to me, Han, I'm not dying your hair anymore because your hair is just dead. And I'm like, okay, let's stop it now. But at least I know. And I, I, every single one, when I had a, a blonde hair, I just took pictures. And this is something, yes, what you do like a teeny. And I'm like, for all the young people out there, even when you're 30, even when you're 40, inside, you're always young. And this is something what I always will keep. If there is something out there, what I want to tr uh, try, because now I have the money. As a child, you didn't have the money for it. Now I can do it because I have the money. And this is something, um, because I also do inner child healing, and I tell to all my clients, now you're doing something with your inner child what you never ever did before. Because you can do it and you can afford it. And this is just, you know, I always say this is something for the soul love. <laughs> Even when there are things like um, not very healthy, like eating, I had one week where I ate every single day ice cream. Not one scoop, four scoops to five scoops. I needed that for my inner child healing. Is it good for the body? No, but I choose vegan ice cream. So at least my, my older body can, can say, yeah, it's good. You can do it. <laughs> Just do it. Um, for me, it's like being curious. Yeah when it doesn't um, being too dangerous. So I would never do bungee jumping. This is, I don't see any sense in it. But I Sky try, I, nope, <laughs> not, not yet. Maybe when I'm 80, because when I'm dying there, it doesn't matter anymore. Um, but I have, I have still a mission to go, but this is something, just do it. Just do it and this, this makes you, in inward smile 
I don't know if it's the right word because English is my second language, but this is just, this is so nurturing. When you do something, what you, what your inner child makes you smile, this is so nurturing for weeks. For me, it's like I'm, even when the ice cream was over, I'm, I was smiling weeks later. And I, I also go, um, not regularly anymore, but when, when I was in Vienna, I went regularly to the fair um, and, and just do weird things, what, what also actually other grown-ups are doing, so you, I don't have a bad feeling for it, but mostly actually children, and I just love it. It keeps me alive. Yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, Bernadette just uh, clarified what I was trying to say. You can, you can just do it, you know, like, um, just ask yourself, like, what have I got to lose? And especially, like she said, I would try more dangerous stuff, you know, I, I would try like the skydiving, um, but you should always pay attention. You should always come back to how you feel um, mm -hmm. when you try something new, you know, don't just, don't just be like, oh, okay, uh, I'm trying something new. And even though it's not really um, uh, satisfying the need that I'm going for uh, at this particular point in time, I'm just going to keep doing it because, you know, it's the new thing I picked up. No, that's not the purpose of, you know, uh, healing or enjoying a hobby is for you to actually enjoy it. So yeah, just, just say, Hey, not try this before. Don't got nothing to lose, but, um, Let's just do it and then we'll see how we feel about it afterwards. Yeah. It's a wonderful to say maybe I, I'm skydiving. No, not at the moment, <laughs> maybe later. <laughs> that is wonderful. The two of you have so much insight and I'm thrilled to death that we get to talk about this today. And I love that it's all about doing it for the love of things, not for uh, the pressure of it. Which actually leads me to my next question is, what do you do when you get the pressure to perform in your hobby? I know some folks, they love to go and sing and or they go do slam poetry or they're like, oh, I'm knitting a blanket. And then there's so much pressure behind it. What is y'all's advice on that? Let's start with Mildred. You're shaking your head now. <laughs> Because <laughs> I have so many unfinished because I I um I, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy into that. I wouldn't buy into the pressure. You know? Um if I if I'm done, I'm done. Whether the project is done or not, you know, whether it's looking great or not, whether I do my hobbies more for the doing of them than looking to be the best performing, right? Sure, with um, practice at a particular craft, for instance, um, my crochet has gotten way, way better over the years. Um, so with practice at a particular crafts, you do get better, but if you're not supposed, that, that shouldn't be your um, priority when you're engaging in a hobby. I say when you're engaging in a hobby, you should be completely present with that hobby, you know? And there shouldn't be like, some uh, trying to look for an end goal where that hobby is concerned. It should be in the experiencing of it. That, that should be where your enjoyment is coming from. So to take away that pressure, I would say, don't, don't, don't look to an outcome. Don't be attached to an outcome with your hobby. Hello, it's a hobby, you know, it's, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be, calming and relaxing and you know beautiful so don't look to an outcome with it don't look to and don't say oh I, I never go into my beautiful dress today sometimes my dresses don't even fit but I don't care you know I could just I could just hang it up to look at it that could that could be its purpose at the end of the day you know so that that would be um I would say keep that keep that in mind keep that in your heart when you find a hobby that you love and that you connect with. Don't do it for the purpose of a particular outcome. Don't, although you can also set goals with your hobbies to get better, but I would say put, make, make your first priority to be um, enjoying the doing of it and then see what comes out of that. Yeah. The same, 
fun, fun, fun enjoyment. And I, when it's not yeah. fun anymore, I just stop. But I like the yes. competition thing. I like the competition thing, but maybe because I'm a Leo in the horoscope, I don't know. Um, but <laughs> not when when it's when it's becoming in, like that you get forced. When it's not, it should be still fun because a little competition you might makes you better, learning from each other. Um, but it still should be in a fun way. And some people are becoming too serious about it. And I'm like, nope, I just go. Yeah. It's not fun anymore. You know, it's not a hobby anymore. As far yes. as I'm concerned, if it's not fun, it's not a hobby. Yeah. yeah. And because it should relax you. It, it should that you come down, that you be, become happy. And whatever hobby it will be, even with, with sport coming down or getting more energy out of it. Um, and it's the same. But I like the competition thing. Um, I like games, I like game, uh, not online games, but offline games thing. And most of the time it's that we are in a different groups and that you compete to each other. And I just like it because you truly can learn from each other. As long as not too serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you all so much for today. The same. Thank you. There is so much insight and I'm really happy we've gotten to talk about this, which leads me to our live audience. Do y'all have any questions you'd like to ask? Let us know and we'll get back to you in just a few minutes. So what are some other thoughts y'all have? Like some advice you'd like to give in general? Let's start with Bernadette. I don't know. I'm still calling myself a workaholic. Um, and enjoying hobbies, even as workaholic, and we, we got raised, I don't know, you can, but get, get in, getting raised that you have to give results and all the things. Choose a hobby or choose something what is the total opposite from your work. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because a lot of people were also compete in the work also begin to, to choose hobbies where they can compete again. This is not a hobby. And knowing people who having a heart attack was something else because uh, even in their hobby time, because they just take it, go, 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 go. It, it's, not, it's not a good idea. And a hobby should be balancing. And um, we call, I call it just fun, but Truly, actually, is balancing, balancing whatever you do uh, outside of your hobbies, like working <laughs> or taking care of kids. Right. right. And um, I would like to add to that. Um, so, uh, in as much as I agree with uh, what she said about um, choose something that is completely different from your work. In order to maybe reduce that pressure of overperforming and where hobbies are concerned, I would also say you can look at um, things that you do day to day or things that you use day to day and just find some way to spruce it up in a way that you enjoy. For instance, I'm gonna use my mother as an, as an example. You know, something everybody does every day is, you know, like, uh, taking a shower, right? But she goes more in depth by creating her own soaps, right? So that is her, that is her thing. And those soaps, you know, she puts different flavors into them, you know, different fragrances. They are for, you know, different types of, um, uh, they, they give different kinds of results, right? So that is just one example. Or, you know, if you love food, like I do, um, instead of just eating what you usually eat all the time, you can research, you know, new recipes all the time or you come up with your own recipes, right? So, so um, for me doing that, like just looking at, okay, what do I use on a day-to-day -day basis or what do I do on a day-to-day -day basis? How can I spruce it up? It helps to take away that pressure of 
oh, what new, completely new, crazy thing can I try? You can start small, especially with someone that, you know, doesn't have a lot of ideas about um, what hobbies could fit them. Just look in your um, daily life, right? So like I said, my mom, she, she enjoys like the fragrances of soaps and she's like, hey, how can I mix my own fragrances to enjoy my, my bath better, you know? So that would be uh, something that I would put into consideration as well, yeah. This, this, is, this is like celebration life and celebration yeah. the small things. I love it. Well, you, you, and uh, this, is, this is like the same with cooking. When I cook, sometimes I need days creating the recipe, preparing everything before I actually begin to cook. And it's not about eating. It's about this, the, the steps and all the things. I even have jazz music when I, when I truly cook, cook. <laughs> I have jazz music and, and all the things. And this is like, no one is allowed getting into the kitchen, nothing. And I just do it because most of the time in business, I'm working in front of the computer and this is like offline. And I just love it. But it's, Mildred, it's beautiful. It's truly celebration, the small things. That is wonderful insight. Thank you both so much. It looks like we do have a question today and it's from Phoenix. Uh, first, they say lovely insight today. Thank you all so much. I wanted to ask what hobbies you know of that can help empower you when you don't feel so confident in yourself. Dancing. Okay. Kickboxing. But yo. <laughs> <laughs> bust those moves okay like don't care don't just let loose mm -hmm. let loose put on some good music that you love and bust those moves okay don't I am a terrible dancer I will tell you that I do not know how to dance at all but I like I said I don't do my hobbies for the purpose of oh I need to be the best world-class you know performer at this I do it because I enjoy myself and dancing is something even, um, you know, scientifically re uh, releases endorphins, like your good, uh, feeling good hormones and all of that. So dancing is the one, the one um, hobby I would recommend for, um, you know, practicing to feel good about yourself. Yeah. Dancing and singing, it's no one is looking at you or listen to you. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's kickboxing. For me, it's kickboxing. Um, it gave me so much boost in confidence when I when I when I begin doing it, and this is uh, this is just like. My, but it's it's the same with dancing. It's just movement, 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 and let's go. The energy out of it, and finding that that's what I meant before. Just try different things. For some, is is maybe knitting. I don't know. Um, it's a little bit boring to me, but for other people, it, it might be totally the confident booster and, and whatever is good. But like, yes, it's dancing and singing. I even sang one day in a show. It was hair. I love hair, musically hair. The others were looking at me like, nah. And I was like, yeah, I like the music. I have to sing with it. I'm so sorry. Um, and I, I just did it. And sometimes, and I saw it actually on, on YouTube, is when people are going to the street and just begin to. And sometimes, and maybe, other people join you because uh, you can support and nurture others by just being simply you and just do it. Yeah. And what's the worst? Well, yes. Good. What's the worst thing? What can happen? It doesn't matter. I just do it. <laughs> beautiful all around absolutely astonishing i love that there were two completely separate answers dancing and kickboxing <laughs> <laughs> and phoenix says that is so awesome thank you thank y'all okay. well it looks like we are just about out of time for today are there any last thoughts that either of you would like to share about getting confident, doing your hobbies, and just having a good life? It's, 
I would um I would just maybe recap a little on um the the points that we've shared and first and foremost pay attention to how you feel always remember that paying attention to how you feel so you can give yourself permission to enjoy the hobbies that you do choose and hobbies are for fun hobbies are for fun hobbies are for healing hobbies are for balancing so um, if you know there's any bit of stress or static where your hobbies are concerned you you might consider looking into something else to try right it's beautiful said it, it for me it's just just do it um we only live once and the only person who is giving you the permission is you yeah. and uh, for me it's like because i always do best case and worst case scenario also with with my people and i'm like what could be the, the, the best because the worst we always know that's probably most of the time where we're not doing something but what could be the best version, the best outcome? It could be maybe ah, fun. It could be maybe you enjoy it. Oh God, I enjoy life. <laughs> and maybe, and this is one of many reasons because I'm actually an introvert person and I just go out more and more and more only to support others. Just do it. Um, for me, it was never a question not doing it. For me, it was always the question, I don't have enough time. I have to compromise and being a, like a speedy and just doing as much as possible. That's living. That's life. That's why we are here on earth, actually. So what's the best thing what can happen to you when you just do it? Wonderful. The advice here today has been incredibly solid. And I know anyone who listens to this episode is going to be able to walk away better. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you very much for the invitation. Absolutely. Yeah. So where can folks find y'all? Let's start with Mildred. Um, so you can find me through my Facebook page um, at Echoes of Source. Very simple. Um, you can join my group on there. I'm on there every day. So you can join my group through my page. So just Echoes of Source on Facebook and um, you'll be able to connect with me. Perfect. How about you, Bernadette? I love social media. So I'm on Facebook, I'm LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, and I'm on YouTube. I have my own YouTube channel. And um, just type in my name and you will find me. All right, all right. Well, thank you everyone for being here today. Thank you for showing up, being your authentic self and helping everyone empower themselves. Yay. <laughs>